You know, people who do what they love, they wear themselves out doing it. Think about the things in life that you love. And if you've got something that, that you really genuinely love, man, I mean, you wear yourself out doing it. You fall asleep doing it in the middle of all of it. Like Michelangelo falling off of a scaffold. And if you don't have anything like that in your life, yet, probably, yet, hopefully you do. But you get there when it bothers you that you don't have that thing. And you get places in life when it bothers you that you're not there. The thing that will kill your life and will kill your soul. And if we're going to be pessimistic, will probably kill humanity is apathy. A lack of being concerned and bothered by things. Because once we don't care what happens, then it doesn't matter what happens. Do I live or die? It doesn't matter. Do we have children or not? It doesn't matter. What matters? Nothing. And if nothing matters, then nothing matters. And people end up angry, bitter, resentful. And they kind of look at life and they just say, this whole life thing isn't worth living. Or better, or worse yet, humanity sucks. And how much of that do we hear today? But, so first off, this, this dude, Václav Havel. Again, it, he was a prime minister, he was a president of Czechoslovakia, and then Czechoslovakia collapsed after the fall of the Soviet Union, and then a new country came up, which was a republic, the Czech Republic. So he's the last president of Czechoslovakia, the first president of the, of the Czech Republic. Interesting, because he was a, a playwright and a poet before he became the president. So the people admired him because he was an artist, so they put him in charge. Uh, you can imagine how that, how that sometimes goes. But he, for some reason, Europeans, especially Eastern Europeans, are, are fascinated by this concept of, of modern, modern people, modern humans. And like where modernism seems to, to pick up for them actually is early 20th century. So, you know, the 19, uh, late 1900s. Um, he points out that it's a tragedy. And it's not that we know less and less about the meaning. And he talks about this on an individual level, a meaning of one's own life. It's not that we know less and less about about the meaning of our own individual lives, it's that we care less and less about there being a meaning to life. Now, we can see that and say, well, okay, well, it's fine. If people don't have a meaning for their life, and if they don't want to pursue a meaning for their life, why does that bother us? So I guess it begs the question, why might it bother us if the people around us don't have a meaning for life? So how other people view their own lives, it impacts your life. So, so beyond just being like, you know, feeling bad, Imagine if you're fired up. Imagine if you're with your friends. You're like, yeah, let's go out this weekend. Let's do this. Let's do that. And your friends are like, well. Like, think about like, some of the emotions that, that you go through. Or if you're really excited about something. Oh, how about this? Better yet. You have a song that you love. And you, and you play the song for your friend. And, you, and you're hyping up. You've got to hear this song. This is a banger. And then you put it on. And they get like, I don't know, like 10 seconds into it. Oh, my God. Did I hear what happened in class last week? Yeah. And they start talking over the song. Like, hey, shut up, listen to the song. No, it's good, I like it. And then they continue in the, in the conversation. Think about the kinds of emotions that we, that we go through with something like that. Or a movie that you tell your friends, you really got to see this movie. And then you put it on and they're, and they're talking throughout the whole thing. So think about, like, like really delve into it. How, how might we describe those, those emotions that we feel? How likely are you to share movies and songs with them in the future? Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, regret. Yeah, regret. You feel foolish, silly, because if you put yourself out there, like this is something really important to me, and everybody kind of rejects it. Um, frustrated, probably. There's a lot that goes on. So the important thing to keep in mind is that a lot of times we will talk about, like, you know, what does it matter to you what other people do? Well, because you have to live around other people. And if other people lack meaning and purpose in their life, think about what that life looks like. And we might just think it's, it's a life of people who walk around just shrugging their shoulders and like, oh, well, who cares? No, no, it's worse than that. It's dangerous. It's really, really, really dangerous. Um, when you look at people who commit mass atrocities, they all seem to have these things in common. They all lack a meaning and purpose of their life. They all seem to have resentment and contempt towards society around them. And why might a person have resentment and contempt? Because we're born into a life, and we're living a life, and not to beleaguer the thing that I've been hitting on all year, but we suffer through a life, and then there doesn't seem to feel like there's a payoff for all of that. And people end up angry, bitter, resentful. And they kind of look at life and they just say, this whole life thing isn't worth living. 
or better, or worse yet, humanity sucks. And how much of that do we hear today? People suck. Humanity sucks. We don't deserve dogs. Have you ever seen a dog in the wild? A dog will eat your child in the wild, literally. There are these, there are these dogs in, in, uh, in Australia called dingoes. They're wild dogs. And there was this, like, this mass hysteria back in the 80s. There was actually a movie, if I remember correctly, called A Dingo Ate My Baby or something like that. But dingoes are, you know, wild dogs are not your friends, man. They are not your friends. Um, polar bears, really adorable, right? I'll sell you Coke, even. The, the drink, not the, not the powder. But if you ever see a, a polar bear in the wild, those are some of the most vicious animals in the, in the wild. You ever see bears? They're so cute. Put a red t-shirt on him. He looks like Winnie the Pooh. Try it and see what happens. Nature does not give a fuck. And yet we'll, all, we'll genuinely sit there and say things like, we don't deserve dogs. No, no, no. We, um, that ends up meaning something. In surveys right now, what we're finding is that young people particularly, if given a choice, or faced with the, the dilemma, your dog is drowning and a stranger is drowning, who do you save? The majority of young people now, for the first time ever we've taken, we've done these, study, these, these surveys, now choose the dog, not the stranger. If you would save a dog before a stranger, that means something. It doesn't just mean that you love your dog so much. It also means that you have so little love and, and, and care for your fellow people. And if we have very little care for our fellow people, we'll think about how that manifests in the ways in which we live. You know, it means you're not going to take time out of your day necessarily to help somebody or to listen to somebody. And yet, we're in a paradox where we feel that way generally. I'm not saying every single person here feels that way. I'm saying this is what our studies indicate. That we, we have a general sense of people that way. And yet, we're also living in a time where we feel less and less connected to people, more and more alienated, which of course is exactly what causes that sort of thing. And we're also living in a time where we're completely lacking meaning and purpose and objective truth and reality. And all of these things come together, and there's words for those, neuroses, mental, health, uh, mental illness. And we're, we're experiencing this, this, mass, this mass psychosis, which was interesting because I think it was like two years ago or so, someone used that phrase in a, in a political context. They referred to it as a mass psychosis. And you had these, these uh, psychologists go on television and say, there's no such term as mass psychosis. Bullshit. I have a book on my shelf over there going back to the 1950s where they talk about mass psychosis. It, it is a real thing. And that means that you can get groups of people to start to follow delusions or to fall into delusions. And why is it that we fall into delusions? Because we're groping around for a reality. We're trying to find something true. Why is it that people fall into cults? It's not just because they're bored on, on a particular Saturday. It's because they're looking for something, and then as they're looking for life, something in life, even if they don't realize they're looking for it, it intersects with a person who's giving them the thing that they think that they're looking for. It might not be the thing that they need, but it very well might be the thing that they want, and they may confuse the thing that they want with the thing that they need. And then suddenly you've got, you know, cults. And we might think, like, yeah, but that's such a small percentage of the population. True, but look at how much damage they can do. Small groups of people. Now, if you start to expand that out, well, if the majority of, of, of young people today would save, it, would save their dog before they'd save another human being, I don't know, do you think that that gets better as time goes on, as people experience more and more of the world? No, probably not. And it's almost like a, a numbing effect, because at the same time, I know that we're also being beaten up by messages because of social media and how connected we are. We're also being beaten up by messages about all the terrible things that are happening in the world. And you'll see these things like, yeah, I don't see them as much as, as I did a few years ago, but I used to see these messages all the time. Things like, if you don't know about the plight of the Iniqui people of southern Uganda, then don't tell me you care about human rights. What the hell is going on over there? You travel like 40 people. Yeah, but there's almost this thing of like, I know about that and you don't, so therefore I'm a better person than you. And you're being chastised for not caring. And if you don't care about you know, all of these 50 issues, then you're just a terrible human being. It almost gets to a point where we're just like apathetic. All right, whatever, share. I guess, you know, that's what everybody else is doing. And it's not because we're bad people. It's not because we're weak-minded people or anything like that. It's just because we're people. And you can get hit with so much stuff coming at you that, that none of it ever actually affects you because you get hit with so much of it. Like, how much suffering do you have to see before you just don't care anymore? How many, how many cartel beheading videos do you have to see before they're no longer interesting? <laughs> they got to get really creative for, to, to catch your attention.
and forget about having nightmares about it because you're so, you're so used to it. Yeah, the problem with, with life is, is, is not that we're lacking meaning, which people are, a lot of people are, but that it bothers us, it doesn't bother us that we're, that we're lacking meaning. And that just means that we're not thinking about it. And if we're not thinking about it, that means that we're just going through life kind of like this. And it isn't like a criticism of the person. It's an, it's an empathetic statement about the person or a sympathetic statement towards the person. That this is a terrible way to go through life. And it's a thing that it isn't just a personal judgment. It's something that people will realize. Like you get to the end of life and that's when a lot of people will start to realize that. Um, I used to have a job that I was there for a lot of people when they died. I saw a lot of people die. I held a lot of hands when people died. I heard, heard a lot of last words. People asked me if I was a serial killer. No. No, no. That was not the job. I was never paid for that. That was just a, a job of passion. But you, you, you hear people's last words and you, find, you see what's important to people at the end. And it's incredible. And yet, sometimes you can hear those things and just be like, that's amazing. I need to change my life and be more like what they're saying. And then you walk out the door and that's it. You know, you completely forget it ever happened. Um, I was telling uh, someone recently that years ago um, I attended an exorcism. Um, true story. And I'll, uh, maybe I'll tell you the story sometime. Um, whether or not you believe in those things or not, the person who was there being exorcised with an O, oh, not an E, genuinely believed that they had a demon inside of them. And afterwards, when, when everything was kind of said and done, they were looking around the room and they were looking at people and saying, oh my God, everything looks different. The lights look different. People's faces look different. I'm hearing things differently. Everything in this person's life had changed. Um, now imagine if you genuinely believed that you had a demon in you and you genuinely felt like something had come out of you and you genuinely saw the world visually different. How long would that change you for? It changes one person for like two weeks, three weeks. That was it. You know, so it almost begs the question, how big of an event has to happen before it impacts us to, to change our lives? And I guess it has to be a life-changing thing to be a life-changing thing. In other words, it can't change the trajectory that we're, cur that we're currently on. You know, like if you're, if you're you know, seeing a cartel beheading video or if you are at an exorcism, that's almost just like salt and pepper in the direction that you're going. It has to be something that actually blocks your, your path in life so that you have to go in a different direction. It has to be genuinely life-changing, not life-motivating. So for some people, that's a, that's a lot. For some people, it's less. Um, but, you, but how much of it is required will relate back to how much it bothers you. In other words, how cognizant are you that things could be better and that things could be different? And that's one of the reasons it's so important for us to experience a lot of things in life. Because you don't know what you don't know. And you don't know until you experience something if it's a way that you'd want to go. And this is one of the reasons that we're, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like, not only really dangerous, but it's, it's life denying. It's life denying to, to, to not pursue certain things that we want to try. Because you might enjoy it, you might like it. Also, by the way, you might hate it and it might really fuck you up. But both of those situations, it teaches you something about where you want to be in life and where you don't want to be in life. And the only way that you can get to where you want to be in life in a meaningful way is to be informed about, why you're, about getting there. It's kind of like, think about the jobs that you guys want to have, the careers. Um, if you want to be an architect, let's say, here's a really good idea. Go talk to an architect. Find out what they think about their job. Um, anybody who, who wants to be a doctor, go talk to doctors like, you know, and find out what they think about their jobs. I know a lot of doctors. I find something interesting. A lot of them hate their jobs. You know, they really, they really hate it. They get paid tons of money, tons of money, and yet they don't feel like it's rewarding and satisfying. Surgeons, surgeons really love their jobs. They really enjoy it. But I'm talking about the general practitioners who sit there and you go in and you're like, and they go, you have a cold. Take some vitamin C, drink some water. And they go in the next room. <coughs> you have a cold. Take some vitamin C, drink some water. And that's their whole day. You know, and then the really exciting one comes through. <coughs> you have the flu. Get some rest, drink some water, and take some vitamin C. And then it's just the same thing over and over and over for them. And this is why they spend a lot of time on vacation, I find, because they can afford it and they just want to get away from what they're doing. You know, you can you can tell if you 
if you love what you're doing in life, if your vacations bother you. If you don't want to go on vacation, then that means that you're probably doing something in life that you should be doing. It's something that you, that you love. You know, people who do what they love, they wear themselves out doing it. They don't, you know, they don't just do it kind of in, 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 in verse, but you wear yourself out doing it. Think about the things in life that you love. And if you've got something that, that you really genuinely love, man, I mean, you wear yourself out doing it. You fall asleep doing it in the middle of all of it, like Michelangelo falling off of a scaffold. You know, and if you, don't, if you don't have anything like that in your life, yet, probably, yet, hopefully you do. But you get there when it bothers you that you don't have that thing. And you get places in life when it bothers you that you're not there. The thing that will kill your life and will kill your soul. And if we're going to be pessimistic, will probably kill humanity is apathy. A lack of being concerned and bothered by things. Because once we don't care what happens, then it doesn't matter what happens. Do I live or die? It doesn't matter. Do we have children or not? It doesn't matter. What matters? Nothing. And if nothing matters, then nothing matters. So, I don't know, maybe the alternative. Everything matters. Should you cross when the, when the thing is telling you not to cross? Mm -hmm. Does it matter? You gotta pick and choose. So find the things that matter. Wear yourself out doing them. And try as best as you can, as best as you can, not to be dragged down by the people around you, the masses of people around you who are apathetic, who are not bothered by it. But that's probably the harder part. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques?